In 2008, the Bank of Korea carried out a study to find the oldest companies in the world. What they found were 5,586 companies older than 200 years old. The five countries with the most companies older than 200 years old were France with 196, Netherlands with 222, Germany with 837, and a whopping 3,146 or 56% of all 200 year old companies were located in Japan. There is actually a name for this in Japan. It's called Shinise, which means old shop. These are businesses that have been in operation for at least 100 years. As of 2020, Japan has more than 33,000 Shinise, 140 older than 500 years, and at least 19 who say they have been operating for over a thousand years. These businesses are a source of national and regional pride, and are the subject of governmental promotion, business management books, and travel guides. Frequently, Shinise are relatively small family businesses, guided by a particular set of principles. These principles tend to emphasize continuity, tradition, long-standing business relationships, sticking to the core business, accumulating cash reserves, and avoiding debt and other risk. This limits growth, but helps the companies weather severe crises. Some Shinise, however, have grown to be leading players in their fields, such as Toshiba and Mitsubishi. The prevalence of Shinise in Japan could be attributed to the particularities of Japanese culture, such as reverence for traditions and one's ancestors, and Japanese history, such as the country's relatively long global isolation prior to the 19th century. These businesses are often passed down through the family. To ensure familial continuity, Shinise owners without children of their own sometimes adopt one of their male employees. The world's oldest company is located in Japan. Kongo Gumi, which was founded in 578, specializes in building Buddhist temples, and is credited with building the first Buddhist temple in Japan. Over the centuries, Kongo Gumi participated in the construction of many famous buildings, including the 16th century Ahsoka Castle. The company's origins trace back 40 generations. As with many distinguished Japanese families, the practice of sons-in-law taking the family name when they joined the family firm contributed to the Kongo Gumi's long existence. But unfortunately, in January 2006, after falling on difficult times, it became a subsidiary of the Takamatsu Construction Group, itself a 104-year-old company. This ended Kongo Gumi's status as the world's oldest continuously ongoing standalone company. Its operating status is unclear at this time, though it is still listed on its parent company's website. The second oldest company in the world and in Japan is a hot springs hotel in Hayakawa Yamanasi Prefecture, which was founded in 705 AD. This is the oldest standalone company in the world and could actually be the true oldest company in operation after Kongo Gumi was acquired in 2006. Since its foundation, the hotel has had its hot water source directly from the local Hakuho Springs. It has been continuously operated by 52 generations of the same family, including adopted heirs, for over 1,300 years. The onsen was created by a man named Fujiwara Mahito, the son of an aide to the 38th Emperor of Japan, Emperor Tenji. Upon its creation, the healing waters of the springs became wildly popular in Japan. Among the guests was Tokugawa Ieyasu, the first shogun of the Tokugawa Shogunate of Japan, which ruled Japan from 1603 until the Meiji Restoration in 1868. He was one of the three great unifiers of Japan. A different hotel was once thought to be the oldest hotel in the world. Hashi is a Ryokan Japanese traditional inn, founded in 1718. The Ryokan, which is about 1300 years old, has been owned and managed by the Hashi family for 46 generations. Some other notable companies are Tanaka Iga, a religious goods maker, founded in 1885, Ichiwa, a confectionery company established in the year 1000, Sudo Honki, Japan's oldest sake manufacturer, founded in 1141, and Suen Tea, Japan's oldest tea house, founded in 1160. Though not over 200 years old, another notable old Japanese company is Nintendo, the game maker behind Super Mario and nearly five decades of developing gaming consoles, which is over 130 years old. Nintendo was founded in 1889 and originally sold decks of traditional playing cards. These old shops slightly vary in products and services, but there are still some similarities. One somewhat obvious similarity is that these companies provide products and services that are still in demand just as they were hundreds of years ago. Hotels, food, alcohol, and religious products. 
products that could continue carrying these companies well into the future without needing to pivot for survival. Most are also small family businesses, though there are exceptions. These companies rarely have multiple owners or are publicly traded companies. If this was the case, you would have more owners not directly involved in the business, and would likely be more concerned with profits during their lifetime and less with the survival of the business after their death. The passing down of these businesses through the family has likely contributed to these companies' survival. As stated before, instead of going after Western-style short-term results, these family-run businesses pursued growth within their means, rarely borrowing to expand and focused on long-standing trust with customers and partners. But this isn't the only reason these businesses have survived. Buying something from a Shinise imparts particular prestige in Japan, connoting the pinnacle of taste. Chuo University professor Toshihiko Miura said that, The love for Shinise highlights Japan's conformity mindset, a belief that owning a Shinise item protects you from social ridicule, and that Japan has its love for luxury brands, shoes, and bags, which exists in the West as well, but in Japan it extends to food, a desire to eat famous things. As a result, there are a lot more companies considered Shinise in Japan. This intense brand loyalty means that most Shinise sustain themselves, big and small, without having to depend on overseas markets. Many of these old shops also require very little for a marketing budget. Many governments and tour companies already promote them, and their status alone encourages locals and tourists alike to visit. Is there something that can be learned from these businesses? Though there are many companies that do use similar practices as the Shinise outside of Japan, it appears more common for Western companies to take on higher risks to squeeze out competition, to include taking on large debts while also having little in cash reserves. This of course has worked out well for many companies, but these risky moves can prevent companies from surviving hard times. We recently experienced what could be described as the ultimate black swan event, and many companies were unable to weather the storm without government support. A notable Western company that does use some of the same practices as Shinise is Microsoft. Microsoft's founder and former CEO Bill Gates held enough in cash reserves to pay every employee's salary for one year if Microsoft hypothetically brought in zero dollars in revenue for an entire year, something the company still practices today. However, a better example would probably be Patagonia. This American clothing company adopted similar principles as Shinise after nearly being forced to shut its doors in the 1980s. The company was experiencing 50% growth a year, so the company continued to expect 50% growth and built up their inventory accordingly. When they only grew at about 25%, combined with the recession that halted bank loans, the company nearly went out of business. Yvonne Chouinard, the founder of Patagonia, now says, The faster the business grows, the faster it dies. He then developed a growth program for what he said would keep Patagonia in business 100 years from now. This plan puts a larger focus on its loyal customer base, and it also purposely slows growth. Patagonia even goes as far as telling its customers to reconsider buying Patagonia clothes, which is better for the environment, but it also prevents the company from needing loans to support large inventory that may not sell. Maybe it's time for more companies to adopt these practices. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more geography related topics. Thank you for watching.